Hello and welcome to another AGD Advanced video. And uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how we can store two values inside a single variable. Now, the most practical application of this is when it comes to sprites, because the number of local variables for sprites is quite limited. And uh, so we can use a technique like this in order to get more values and uh, store them within the sprite data. But for the purposes of this example, I'm going to use a global variable. I'm actually using the variable lives. And as you can see here, I've got a number of lives. And I've also got a bomb counter. Uh, I'm using the keyboard here to change the values. It's purely a test. Now, the interesting thing about this is that this value is actually stored in a single variable. So if you have a look into here, you will see that I have set the lives as 27 and 2 is the number of uh, lives and 7 is the number of bombs. So I'm basically using a single number to store two numbers and in this case two tens and uh, seven ones. And uh, so when I'm manipulating the code I just have to separate those two numbers out and uh, so let's look at how we actually separate the numbers uh, mathematically. The first thing that we would do with the number uh, 27 would be to divide it by 10. Now with this very basic arithmetic of course there won't be any decimal points so dividing 27 by 10 will of course give us the number 2. So uh, we've got our number 2 that's our first number we just simply divide by 10. Now, how do we get the number 7? Well, basically, we start with the number 2 and we multiply that by 10. That would give us 20. We then take the number 20 and subtract it from the original number, which is at the top there, as you can see, 27. So subtract 20 from 27 and that will give us the number 7. So this is the uh, basic principle of, uh, of how to take a, a larger number and split it into two separate individual numbers. And in this case, because we're working in uh, decimal, it's very easy to read because we can see the number 2, we can see the number 7. The other thing we can also conclude from this is that the uh, maximum possible values we can have here are between 0 and 9 because obviously we're now working in single digits. But uh, if you have a variable such as lives or bombs and you know it's never going to go above the number 9, you can use this approach. So uh, let's now go back and look at the code itself that I'm using to show you how it actually works. Essentially we start with a number and we have to basically convert it into two numbers. Then we can uh, manipulate it within the code and then finally uh, we can uh, restore the number so that uh, when the next cycle comes around, the variable um, will the variable values will still be stored within the original number itself. So we'll look at uh, we'll look at some code here now. And as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm using temporary variables. It may seem excessive that I'm using a lot of variables here, but in actual fact, this technique is very very useful when it comes to using sprite variables. Uh, you can use uh, just three temporary variables for all of your sprites and in that way you can increase the number of sprite variables, local variables, uh, significantly and that's why it's worthwhile. So we'll start here by defining uh, zero, uh, sorry, O and P to be the same value as lives which is the uh, variable that's storing uh, both numbers. I then divide O by 10 and that gives me my first number. As you remember, 27 divided by 10, that gives me my 2. I don't want to change O, so I'll now use a third variable and let Q equal O. And Q is going to be the number I multiply to give me the number 20, as seen in the example, which will basically mean that uh, I can then subtract that from the final variable, which is P, and obviously P is currently 27, so we'll take 20 away and that means that O is now 2 and P is now 7. Q 
Q we won't need again, so we can use it as a temporary variable in another place. As I said, I can't really stress it enough. In this particular situation, it's a demonstration, but where it comes in especially handy is when you start using local variables to do this, because you can use the same uh, temporary variables every time. So here within the code, I've uh, displayed lives, and then here you can see that by pressing a key, I will have added a value to O. So let's say I add 1 to O, O would then become th uh, 3. I would multiply it by 10, that would make it 30. I would then add P, and then it would be stored back in the uh, original variable, lives, uh, at the end here. So it means I can uh, manipulate my temporary variables and then store it back in a global variable such as lives, and it will uh, it will keep it throughout uh, it will be consistent throughout any any script that we use. So what some of you I'm sure will have realized is that uh, we don't have to limit ourselves to uh, to decimal here. Uh, I've done decimal because obviously that's something that uh, people are more comfortable with and I thought it would be a good way for you to kind of get your head around the idea of how this works. But uh, what I can show you um, is that uh, it's perfectly possible to work instead of uh, decimal, we can work in hexadecimal because we know that we can actually store a number from 0 to 255 and uh, 255 is basically um, the equivalent of 99 in, uh, in decimal. So um, if we have a look here, in order to do this all we have to do is change the number here to 16 and this number to 16 and uh, the number right at the bottom where we uh, restore will also change to 16. And this means our variables can now be between 0 and 15, which obviously means we can do more with them. Okay, so that's the introduction. We'll be back with another video with a more practical example fairly soon. In the meantime, keep enjoying AGD, keep enjoying the spectrum, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.